Sherlock Holmes had the first ever forensic crime lab. 23 years later, in 1910, the first real lab was created by another avid reader of Conan Doyle's stories. Edmund Locard, spurred by Sherlock's teachings, would go on to make the most important single contribution to forensic science. Edmund Locard is one of the biggest fans of, of Sherlock Holmes that ever existed. He's inspired by this notion that you can use science to understand what happened in a crime scene and who's responsible for it. His idea is he's going to start his own crime lab, so he assumes that's happening all around the world. And he assumes this because of what he's read in the Sherlock Holmes works. And he finds nobody's using them at all. There is no fingerprinting units. There's no scientific trace evidence examination. There's no forensic chemistry. It's not happening. Not anywhere. In frustration and in almost in despair, he comes back and says to the local police department in Lyon, I want to start a forensic lab. And they say, fine, but we don't have any real space for you and we don't have really a budget for you. So you're gonna kinda have to use what we can give you. And they give him this attic space that is utterly inadequate for what he's trying to do. But that becomes the very first police crime lab in history. It is impossible for a criminal to act considering the intensity of a crime without leaving a trace. He wanted to inspect Emil and see if he could find anything on him. He had quite dirty fingernails. Lacard took some scrapings from underneath the fingernails. Such innovative gathering of trace evidence was straight out of Sherlock Holmes. Lacard was doing it for the first time in real life. Locard examined the debris in microscopic detail. Not satisfied until he could account for everything he found there. A pinkish dust within the residue stood out. On further examination, Locard realized the particles were from a cosmetic powder. This minute trace evidence was vital to solving the murder of Marie Littell. As the killer grasped Marie's neck, his nails scratched off microscopic amounts of her cosmetic powder, indelibly linking the murderer to the crime. Locard then carefully examined Marie's face powder. He discovered it directly matched the powder found underneath Emile's nails. Faced with this unprecedented evidence, Emile Gobain confessed. At 12.30, he entered Marie's apartment. And strangled her to death. never imagining he would carry away vital evidence on his hands. To cover his tracks, arriving just before his friends, he put the clock back by an hour. His friends then unknowingly gave the police Emile's perfectly constructed alibi. But for Locard's pioneering use of Sherlockian trace evidence, Emile Gobain would have escaped justice. It was from this case that Locard formulated his exchange principle. Whenever two things come into contact, they leave a trace on each other. It's that idea of exchange. So if I come into contact with a table, I'm leaving traces, I'm leaving fingerprints, I'm leaving DNA. But at the same time, I'm taking dust from the table or maybe a paint chip from the table. So I'm leaving a trace on the table, but the table's also leaving a trace on me. There is no such thing as a clean contact between two objects. The two bodies come into contact, mutually contaminating each other with minute fragments of material. The microscopic debris that covers our clothing and bodies are the mute witness, sure and faithful of all our movements, 
and all our encounters. That is something right out of a Sherlock Holmes novel, that whenever two things come into contact, they leave a trace. And as forensic scientists, we play that out on every crime scene that we come across. We rely on Locard, just like Locard relied on Holmes. Locard's principle of exchange is the first tenet in crime scene investigations and forensic science. End of file. <laughs>